It's part five of our conversation with Rick Emmett. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. You and Alex Life, you became closer to him than anybody in Rush, right? Yes, yeah, and he, he played on the on the Res 9 record. He, you know, he, he played on a couple of tracks. We cut it at Metalworks, and we, you know, spent the day there. Uh, and he, he's, a, he's a sweet guy. He's a wonderful guy. He's, um, he's an extremely talented, creative guy. Um, when uh, Neil went off on his, uh, you know, going to ride my motorcycle around the world and I'm maybe going to quit the music business, Alex did stuff like he would go and uh, take a job uh, um, in, in a winery in California so that he could learn the, the business of, of a winery right from the ground all the way up. So he would go and do that. And, and um, he has that kind of a mind, that kind of, and I've done things where I've done little paintings for a charity and then license painting shows up and it's like, license is like, you know, Renoir. And I'm like, uh, you know, some bad, uh, you know, Peter Max, you know, you know that, no, Jackson Pollock. I'm throwing the paint on the canvas. And, you know, Alex has actually got technique. And I'm going, oh, my God, this guy, you know, he's so talented. He's so great. Um, but he's, he's sweet and he's calm and, and uh, yeah, like um, a great guy to be around. I, I don't know the other guys in the band very well at all. I didn't know Neil and Getty, you know. The, the most I know about Getty is that he's got great seats at the Blue Jays games. We see Getty, when the Blue Jays are actually playing home games, you can see Getty in the second row behind home plate. And he has a scorecard. He, he keeps score. So he takes, he takes the game serious. One of the things that Getty and I share, by the way, is his son apparently ended up playing baseball at a high level. And uh, Getty would go down into Blue Jays uh, practices, and he would shag flies on, on batting practice and stuff. And uh, I never shag flies, but I have been out at the – my son played NCAA Division One baseball and uh, went to a pretty high level. And uh, he once got a workout with the Blue Jays with with uh, Butterfield, the coach, put him through a workout. And no uh, kidding. oh yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah, I mean, I've got pals that were um, Blue Jays broadcasters and stuff. I, I knew Jerry Howarth very well, and uh, Jerry and his wife and my wife, we, we'd go out for dinner occasionally and stuff. And, yeah, Jerry was, uh, he opened the doors for me. And, and then, you know, we'd get to know the TV guys. And now I knew them, you know, uh, Campbell and Jamie Campbell. And, you know, so one thing led to another. I'd be able to, so we have a connection there. We both love baseball, but that's. What are you working on now? Are you working on anything or, because you're always well, working. Well, I, you know, I said, I said this book of poetry. Um, I mean, I, I try to write at least a little bit every day. And sometimes something that goes in my notebook, I go, oh, that's clearly going to be a song lyric. So I'm probably going to end up trying to write a song. Uh, sometimes it's poems now. So I've been writing a lot of poetry. And I, I, it looks like I'm going to make a publishing deal. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to jinx it. and I don't want to talk about it uh, too early. But and I've had agents that have been wanting to represent me. And, but, I mean, the selling of a poetry book, this is not a big deal. Right? Like, I can. I think I can do that contract myself. Then, uh, having said that, uh, publishers generally go, "Well, how about a memoir, Rick? How about an autobiography?" And now that's a whole other league. That's a whole different story. And of course, we live in a time now of audio books becoming more and more important all the time. And I do have my own little studio and you know good mics and things. I I have a, an ability to be able to do that myself. James Taylor so, just did uh, that. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, he, in fact, was the lost leader for the company that was, you know, trying to get you to sign up for the monthly audiobook downloads. And um, he must have got a pretty penny for that, you know, because um, that's the first audiobook I ever actually sat down and listened to is James Taylor's Breakshot. Um, so that for sure is in my future. I'm, I'm not sure when. I'm not sure how long it would take because the the the, the, the the publishing of a book, it often takes a lot longer. It's not like an album, you know, uh, which it has its own time frame to get to the public. But, um, see, I mean, Bonfire stuff, uh, once my guys delivered the, the, the masters to, to my um, website administrator, 
she can put it up the next day. You know, like that's an almost instant kind of a turnaround. Uh, uh, a book that's going to get printed and published, that's a whole, you know, that's a whole other ball of wax. Did you keep notes all these years? Did you were the, Half the people I know, they, they, they kept rough notes and just... I have, I have notebooks. Yeah, they go all, all the way back. But, because uh, I'm a writer, so, and I've kept all my notebooks, and I haven't donated them to an archive yet or anything. And I might want to go through them and <laughs> weed, them, weed them down a little before I do it. Uh, I ask my website, I have a, uh, a members forum on my website and, and uh, the, so the fans and it, I go there every day and I answer questions. <clears throat> so I ask my website administrator, can you do me a favor, pull all of the stuff like then the site started back. Oh my God. Not is the, you know, early in the, in the two thousands. So it's almost 20 years of stuff. And, she, and I said, can you pull it all together in a word document so that I can, you know, edit it. And when she sent it to me, the file was over 5,500 pages, single space. So there's, there's probably, and, and in the back of my mind, John, I'm thinking there's probably three books here. One of them is going to be, this is what I remember about being a rock star and about being in, you know, in, in the music business. Here's a, a, a kind of a thing that's going to be one of those sort of, uh, you know, Seth Godin purple cow books. Like, this is what I taught uh, about music business. This, this is the advice I have. Um, this is what I think about marketing and promotion and blah, 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 about business. Um, and then the third one is maybe going to be, this is what it's like to be a songwriter, guitar player guy. This, if you're interested in guitar playing and songwriting, this is kind of, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to make it like an instruction manual. And because I already have one of those, I have a, a thing called For the Love of Guitar, which is a guitar instruction thing, which is on, people can order it off my site. You know, I've had that ever since I compiled the 13 years of the guitar player columns, you know. So, you know, I'm not going to revisit that, but I do think that um, there's probably a, a third book that's going to be a little bit more esoteric about being a, being a teacher of, of, of music things. and music theory uh songwriting technique uh, craft you know those kind that kind of stuff well you know every so, interview that you and i have done we've always got like we were talking about zen thinking and every interview i've done with you uh has been and chuck Loeb was like that chuck Loeb, who passed away a few years ago we what we always veered off and i find myself asking questions unrehearsed unprepared questions spontaneous uh, of things that I would have never, I don't ask other people that, and, and you're one of those artists that, that's like that to me. I mean, you know, behind, what's what's happening, the fuel behind even writing something. Yeah. You know? Because, you know, my dad at 65 stopped, uh, stopped working uh, and decided that's the age. He was tired. He sat in a rocking chair. He lived till he was 87. I don't no. want to retire. I don't, I don't, at 65, I'm not going to retire. Why would I like what I do? Yeah. When, when I was a kid and I started to figure out the guitar and I had a guitar in my room, I went, okay, I have a passport to the universe, you know? And then my little radio, when I was nine years old, my mom bought us all transistor radios, my brothers and I. And now I had another passport to the universe. I had the guitar and I had the radio. And so, you know, uh, I will never, if you if I had done this interview down in my basement like you, you'd see – there was one guy I did an interview a couple of days ago, and he goes, I saw that video you got up on the internet where you did it from a guitar store. And I went, no, that wasn't a guitar store. That, that's my basement. That's my basement. I, you know, I've got about 45 guitars down there, and he's going, oh, my God. You know. But um, guitars to me, they're always going to be – the, the passports to the universe that's what they're going to be you know and and i've got a nice little digital studio down there that's going to be something that's going to allow me to be creative i retired from the road i didn't retire from the creative process and i will never retire from that being creative is like uh my wife bought me for my birthday this year all of these acrylic and oil paints and, and canvases and brushes. And when I was a kid in high school and in college, 
I was the cartoonist for the for the school paper and, and the, the the college yearbook and stuff. So um, uh, that it, well, I did some uh, cartoons for Hit Parader magazine in the early '80s. The publicist Howard Bloom set me up, and I did rock tunes for for Hit Parader. Um, and you know, over time, that's all fallen by the wayside. But I think as I get older, I might want to go back to that and go back to art again from a creative point of view. Not because I'm looking to try and find my way to the marketplace, but only because I'm looking for ways to express myself. And um, you know, as arthritis is taking over my fingers a little bit and my neck, my back, you know, um, there's there, there comes a point where you go, okay, maybe I'm not having as much fun with the guitar. Um, so maybe you know, I'll see if I can't translate it to things that you know maybe. Uh, don't offer quite as much pain. Rick has just reissued 11 of his solo albums. There'll be a link in the description of this video where you can pick them up. Also pick up a Rocky Stream Music t-shirt. They look pretty good. Subscribe to our channel, share our videos, and comment on them as well. We'll have more from Rick next week. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music.